Uh, hi, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. And thanks for the folks at Startup Grind for hosting me. My name is Tarun Manthana, and I'm head of product engineering at Atlassian. And I'm thrilled to join you all to talk about one of my favorite topics, building AI to supercharge growth and improve the way work gets done. So for those who aren't familiar with us, we are the makers of several collaboration and productivity products, including Jira, Confluence, and Trello. Today, over 260,000 customers use our products to better collaborate, including companies like Audi, Deutsche Bank, and Reddit. Now, as part of my role, I oversee the engineering team across the company's entire product portfolio, including our Atlassian Intelligence product that we launched earlier this year. And I've been dabbling in AI for about 15 years. Previously, I led the search team at Microsoft Bing and later joined Facebook to lead their search and marketplace teams. In my second stint at Microsoft, I led the Microsoft content teams and helped build a personalized recommendation feed called Microsoft Start. And now I've been at Atlassian for almost 10 months to work on products. However, it doesn't take 15 plus years of AI experience to know that this AI explosion did not happen overnight. Advancements in AI, machine learning, and search have been developing for some time now. And we see these increasingly getting incorporated into applications that we use every day. But what is new is that we are beginning to see some real world applications of large language models and natural language generation. And that it's growing at a clip. Now, this is a huge shift in technology on par with the invention of the internet and the mobile revolution. At the same time, we are also experiencing one of the biggest fundamental shifts in how we work. We are in the era of distributed work, which is getting remote and hybrid. So now, if you are distributed and working in teams, finding the right information is a headache. Even long before pandemic, the information flow has always been a thing that sets teams apart. At a time when workplace grows more distributed and the need for better collaboration and connection becomes more crucial, we should be thinking about how to design AI products that will actually help teams and customers, not just individuals, work better together. Now at Atlassian, our mission is to unleash the potential of every team. And that starts with better teamwork. So we are very excited about the possibilities with AI in furthering that mission. So for the rest of our time together today, I'll start with a quick use case of how we approach these opportunities at Atlassian. Then I'll dig into three areas where AI has the most potential to improve teamwork and collaboration. Along the way, I'll share how we are exploring these areas within Atlassian and some general tips and challenges to keep in mind. And lastly, I'll wrap up with some key considerations that every engineering and product team should be thinking about, especially as you look to increase your customer value with AI. And I'll do my best to leave a few minutes in the end for a Q&A. So as I had mentioned, being a teamwork company, we are passionate about figuring out how we can solve challenges that get in the way of productivity and collaboration for our customers at Atlassian. Our products enable collaboration that is content driven. And with the current capabilities of AI, especially generative AI, there's quite a bit that we can do with it. So earlier this year, we launched Atlassian Intelligence, a virtual teammate that deeply understands how teams collaborate to accelerate work. It's embedded across our products to help summarize content, surface relevant context, create plans, and generally provide an extra set of hands to the teams. Now, Atlassian Intelligence was built using large language models from external providers like OpenAI, as well as some internal models that we built. Now, apart from these large language models, one key ingredient for us is our teamwork graph. So with our teamwork graph and over 20 years of teamwork data, for every customer, Atlassian Intelligence will understand the context and relationships within the business, such as the people behind the work, the teams that they are part of, how work is planned across projects, how it connects to the high-level goals, and what is the current state of that work across first-party Atlassian products, such as Jira or Trello, or third-party tools, such as Sneak or Figma. For example, a customer can ask, which features are missing Figma designs for next week's launch and get linked to specific Jira issues related to these. So now we've been using Atlassian intelligence internally for months now, and while also running a beta version for our customers. And in December, it will become generally available to all our customers. Now that said, we are just scratching the surface of what can be done with generative AI and how it can accelerate teamwork. So there are three big areas that have the most promise when it comes to teamwork and Gen AI applications. First is the way we search for business context. Second is the way we get started on planning projects, specifically turning unstructured brainstorming work into structured plans. And third is the way we track or move work forward across the business. 
So let's start with search. Search is one of the most important parts of user experience in any product, allowing you to quickly access the information you need. And it becomes even more important when working in a corporate or enterprise setting where your data and knowledge may be spread across different tools. Now, thanks to Generative AI, there are three important shifts happening within search to uplevel that experience. First and foremost, we need to build high quality search on the data. Now, as I had mentioned, I worked in this space for 15 years, and I know firsthand that it takes a lot of investment and time to build even basic search functions. But thanks to recent improvements, building a good search capability on your data has become easier and faster than before. Search platform building blocks, like fully functional keyword search is available out of the box on most cloud platforms. And actually there are multiple implementations to choose from. And more recently, several semantic search solutions have also become available, helping to improve the quality of search. The second improvement we can think of is turning that keyword search into question and answering. Now, keyword search is what most of us are used to using today, where you type in a few keywords in the hopes of finding some links that are related to what you were looking for. Q&A is when you ask questions in the search bar using everyday language, as if you would ask another person, and then get a full response in return. Now, building Q&A is easier to do now with advancements in deep learning and large language models. You can take users' natural language input and ask the large language models to help identify what keyword searches to perform in order to answer that question. Then you issue those keyword searches against your search backend and collect those set of results. Next, you can take the content of those results and then pass that along as a context with the original question that the user had asked back to a large language model and then instruct it to help formulate a cogent answer to the user question. And guess what? Now you have a question answering system on top of your data. So the next improvement we can layer on top of QA is changing that single question and answer capability into multi-turn conversation with data that allows the end users to do more in-depth exploration while getting to the exact relevant information that they need for their work. Again, this is now easier to do with large language models. On top of the QA capability that we just talked about, we build a conversational history for each user. And as we call the large language model to generate a well-formed answer for each user input in an ongoing conversation, we also pass in the previous conversation history in the context. So now by incorporating these techniques, you can enhance the search experience in any product, enabling the users to find the information they need quickly, efficiently, and at the depth they need it, all in natural language. That is also what we are doing at Atlassian Intelligence, where we are providing high-quality conversational search across all Atlassian applications, such as Confluence, Jira, and Trello, to help users get answers to their questions and get caught up quickly to the right work context. So another area of teamwork that will transform with AI is project planning. Specifically, we are talking about the ability to take unstructured brainstorming work and turn them into structured plans captured in the work management tools that you may be using. For AI, it's really all about identifying patterns. So imagine you come out of a product planning meeting with engineering product and design teams. You come away with meeting notes, decisions, and action items, and some rough idea of what the roadmap may look like. Now, instead of sifting through those notes, doing repetitive tasks, there's a virtual assistant that can synthesize all of this data and automatically break down the body of work for you. AI can even recommend owners for each parts of the work based on the business context and the collaboration graph. Another example is post-incident reviews. Now, being an engineer all my life, I've been part of many cells throughout. So imagine you're coming out of a discussion on an incident. AI can help write post-mortems based on that discussion and even create JIRA issues based on the action items identified during that discussion. And to make all of this a reality, one would need to seed the large language models with the right context around work and prior examples of what ideal structured work may look like. Of course, after all of this, humans will still be required to do quality checks on the work and add in any additional details to get it to the finish line. But now, bulk of the low-level work is done for you. So one of the most common scenarios we will see AI help is tracking work across projects and teams, surfacing up the most relevant updates and decision points, and help streamline the delivery of work. Now, this is really all about moving work forward and improving productivity. And this can take many, many forms. So the first form this could take is how to how we get up to speed. Now, here is a common scenario. You're coming back from a long vacation. Now, currently, you would probably be spending at least a whole day, if not more, just digging through your emails, alerts, and chat messages 
to get caught up on what happened while you were out. Now imagine if an AI powered agent can summarize this across the various tools and channels and surface the key information on how the project progressed while you were out so you can jump right back in. The second way AI can help move work forward is through streamlining handoffs between teammates, especially where the context is exchanged. Here's an example. A service agent is working on a customer issue and at some point they need to do a transition of this issue to another agent. So now AI can help summarize the full context, like what is the exact problem the customer is facing, what actions have been taken so far, and help bring the next agent up to speed quickly. Third, AI can help remove blockers faster. Now as team leaders, one of the common job we have is to help unblock our teams if they get stuck. Now instead of reading Jira tickets, GitHub PRs, and Confluence pages, if there was an AI agent which can help answer questions about projects, like what got done and where work is stuck. That can help you get to the choke points quicker so that you can help resolve them and help move that work forward. Now, when served with the right context, AI can be our ultimate teammate in helping to increase the clock speed of work. So these are the three major areas where we see generative AI has the most potential to change how teams get work done today. And that's just within the teamwork context. Now, looking at the bigger picture, there's a huge potential for AI to accelerate how we all work, whether you are a scrappy startup trying to do less with more or a big enterprise trying to break down information silos. And as you go after some of these opportunities of your own, we know that time to market for AI product development is crucial, especially when it feels like there are several new advancements being announced every day. So based on our own experience building Atlassian Intelligence, here are some tips and considerations for you to think about as you look to accelerate AI product development for your own companies. First, start with a user problem. Don't integrate AI for the sake of AI. Be laser focused on the user problem that you're trying to solve, and then see how AI can help solve that problem better, faster, or more delightfully for your customers. There might be cases where AI can automate low-level tasks or take friction out of an existing work product flow. And then there might be cases where AI can enable a brand new use case that just wasn't previously possible. In either case, it needs to be a problem that customers care about. Second, it's important to optimize for speed of building. Now this technology itself is new and evolving fast, which means there will be constantly better ways of building something. However, you want to build fast, get something working end to end and get it in front of the users to get feedback. Because while we may have a great idea, what we don't know whether it will resonate with users or not. For example, for many Atlassian intelligence features, we opted for generalized general purpose large language models with few short prompt engineering instead of fine tuning or building custom models. And now as we are scaling Atlassian intelligence to a lot more users and customers, we are fine tuning those large language models with some specific, for some specific use cases and building our own models to optimize for quality, performance and cost. Now, another thing to think about is getting user feedback early. This goes hand in hand with the last point about optimizing for the speed of building. When we announced the beta of Atlassian Intelligence at our annual user conference, Team 23, earlier this year, we saw lots of immediate interest. We had hundreds of eager early access program signups and power users to get feedback from. And this has been immensely useful for us as we have gotten some really good feedback from our early adopters. And we are actively, actively defining our product based on that feedback. So my suggestion to you is that even if you can give early access to just a few of your power users, that fresh perspective and feedback will unlock new ideas for product development. Fourth, look for ways to leverage your data. If you're just building a thin wrapper on top of GPT-4 or another large language model, that is fine, but that alone may not be a differentiated or attentive product. Now I recognize that some of you may not have tons of data sets yet, but if you do, think about what is special about your data and what user problems you can solve uniquely with it leveraging generative AI. This is especially true for those of you who have access to data that is not easily available in public domains. You might have a competitive edge in solving a customer problem. Last, but certainly not the least, develop responsibly. Remember, this technology is not neutral. So once you bring in new tools, there needs to be checks and balances in place. This is an important one, so it's worth breaking this down further. So there are three things to think about here, testing, human input, and privacy. First, it's important, sorry, I... First, it's important to have strong testing loops and safety by design on AI products and features so that we can roll these out with confidence. 
it's good to create representative test sets for input per scenario. Now you can maintain these sets and track progress over time, especially as you iterate on quality. Also, you should be proactively thinking about worst case scenarios, how these models could be exploited and then test against those kind of input as well. Second, given that most AI features take natural language as input, the potential test matrix could be infinite, but and you can never be 100% confident on accuracy. So think of building affordances in the product so that you can provide so that your users can provide feedback easily. Now, this can be as simple as a thumbs up, thumbs down feature that appears after AI generates an answer. Third, we need to be careful about how customer data is handled and retained both at your end. And if you're using any third party large language model provider, understand how they're handling data. Now it's even better if you can put all of these policies together and practices together to guide your decision making. At Atlassian, we are guided by our own responsible technology principles that shape how we develop, deploy and use AI both internally and externally. Now, as part of this practice, we have a whole checklist of questions that engineers and product teams are required to fill out before developing new AI features. And we'll be sharing this template later this year. So keep an eye out for that. So generative AI is already impacting every single company and industry, and it will significantly improve the way we all get work done today from the way we search for context, plan that next big idea and track and deliver work against it. So what I talked about today is really wave one of what we expect to see in the near future on how teamwork will evolve with AI. It's really hard to predict what wave two will look like. Whatever it may be, I'm sure it will drastically change how we work and unlock productivity to the, to the next level. So I challenge you all to think about how are you going to use AI to supercharge your team and customer impact to reach that next level of growth? And what foundations you can put in place now to prepare yourself for that next opportunity ahead. Thanks, thanks again for joining me today. And if you would like to know more about how we are approaching some of this at Atlassian, feel free to check out Atlassian Intelligence on our website. Thank you again for hosting me and it was uh, great to see you all.